Blood Covenant, a V5 Sabat story, is a production of Simulacra Studios. This podcast is intended for a mature audience and contains descriptions of violence, sexual activity, mental illness, body horror, and inhuman supernatural depravity. If you are not comfortable with what you hear, please feel free to skip ahead or stop listening. If you'd like to support the show, please visit patreon.com slash Simulacra Studios. Let the great change begin. And he pulls out. He gets in the car. He pulls out into the terminal, cuts some, some guy off, and begins to speed down. He heads back into the city and eventually parks in front of a subway station called McGill Station. And he says, uh, you go there, uh, someone will show you uh, the uh, the secret entrance, huh? Thanks, Willie. All right. Thank you, Willie. Have a lovely evening, Willem. He'll squeeze himself out of the van and then take a long assess around the area. It's very cold. It's a little bit below freezing. But much like in New York, it's very dry. When the wind blows, it, uh, even through your dead flesh, it, uh, it cuts a chill, like kind of like a, a little sharp knife. Oh, so it's not snowing. Fuck. It's not snowing. No, it, it's just dead. Yeah, it is dead. It is quiet. It's where the air hurts your face. But you guys can get into the station fairly easily. I mean, this is a Montreal public transport, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm making sure we're not being followed. You notice a few people. Someone's across the street. Someone is sort of waiting uh, at the door. They don't necessarily seem to be hiding from you. They're just sentries. But they're there. You, you you clock their presence. Yeah, we got... Yeah, I mean, we got eyes on us, but I don't think it's anything special. A bug looks like he is chewing the air. That's how upset he is. Buck, are you okay? I'll be alright. I'm gonna be just fine. I, 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 I do kind of come up next to you, and I'm like... In a weirdly, like, nice for Reggie kind of way. It's like, hey man... We get to be what we say we are, not what they tell us. You're damn right. You're damn right. And that's what I intend to be. But I will say this. You will become something different. That's the point. And and you'll be... You, you'll feel better once this is all over. Once this is all over. My sire was a living hive of, of insects. Yeah, I get what I'll become. You don't necessarily have to be that... No interest. He just shakes his head, like, says under his breath, like, Zamisi, and then walks off. I'm with you, man. I thought it was fucking stupid, too. So you guys head into the station. And it's well after 1 a.m. now. It is very empty. There's not a lot of people. There's people who work here. There's some janitorial staff. There's some people watching the turnstiles uh, to go into the subway. But there's not a lot of people here. Yeah, we look like the most motley crew that would ever motley. Oh yeah, you guys you guys look like the fucking Adams family just walked into, or the Munsters. Munsters, they've got Marianne. It's not too hard to spot the very ratty looking young man who's sitting leaning up against a wall, the guitar case, and he's just sort of absent mindedly plucking the strings of his very old, very busted looking guitar. I'll come up and I'll uh, pull out some cash and he's like, pulls out like one, two, three, and throws it in the his guitar case. A too quick hand snatches it out of the case. And says, it's very generous of you, sir. I like artists. <laughs> I'm a fucking homeless person, man. I'm not an artist. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, what's that you said? We uh, we get to be who we say we are. I like you, man. <laughs> anyway, you guys, uh, you guys, you guys, I don't, I don't recognize you guys. You guys from out of town? Mm-hmm. That we are. 
Alright. Alright. Cool. Cool. Well, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this door for you, and if you're not supposed to be here, you're gonna get turned inside out, right? <laughs> Understood. That's what we would expect, yeah. He closes a guitar case and slides it over, moving it out of the way of one of those walls made out of plywood, like they put up when they're doing maintenance on an area. And he just takes his fist, slams the wall three times, and the door swings in. And he says, Come on, guys, m- m- make it quick. We don't like too many eyes on this. I'll go in first. I- I'm going to tug on L- Leon's just, you know, he says he's not an artist, but he's got a flair for the theatrics. Notice that. Yep, slip on through. So, yeah, you guys head through. It looks like kind of like a maintenance passageway. Eventually, there is a large metal door. It looks like it's not locked but it is closed. I'm letting Leader Man take care of this shit. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll open it up. Okay, you open it up, and this waft of cold, stale air comes out of it. And it looks like it leads down a staircase. Is it dark down here? It's very dark down here. Uh, I will turn on my abyssal eyes. The, the darkness just sort of equalizes it doesn't go away but you you sort of see sort of the shades of of monochromatic darkness that allows you to navigate the darkness it's not entirely dark there's like a flickering fluorescent bulb that barely gives off any light so the rest of you can see the staircase down so eventually the staircase heads down and the architecture changes it is what you would expect in a cathedral. Large marble buttresses, echoing passageways, gothic sconces and other flourishes. The noises of your footsteps just careen against the large stone expanses. And eventually you sort of make your way into this large kind of entry hall. And you haven't seen anyone yet. Reggie, you see it first. In one of the large arches, there is something sort of perched up in the ceiling. It's big. Not so much massive, but it just takes up a lot of space. Leon, you, when you see Reggie's eyes go up, you're able to look out and you see it in this terrible, like, monochromatic relief. The rest of you see when the first leg comes down. It's like it was holding itself up in the ceiling by pressing on the walls. And so it disengages this long, spindly, kind of multiple-jointed giraffe-like leg. Comes down about six feet away from Buck on the left. And then the second one comes down behind Paisley. Ooh! Gave me a little start. It's just positioning itself and getting it down. And then the body of it arches down. And it's just sort of this vaguely spherical mass of flesh that has a woman's torso dangling from it. And as the bulk of the body comes down, she twists herself around so that she is hanging upside down with her head and eyes at eye level with all of you. I'm going to turn to Reggie, and I'm going to say, Reggie, is this a friend of yours? Uh, I hope so. She says, I have not met the young one of my clan. But allow me the honor of welcoming you, who bear the name and the backing of Prisky Vaikos. Welcome to the Cathedral of Eternal Whispers. Thank you. Thank you for having us. That is a dramatic entrance. Well, this is terrifying. Uh, th- thank you. We, I'm honored to be here, I think. You come at a good time. A good holy time. We are to have Espot tomorrow night. Many, many are coming. Much business is to be discussed, and there is, of course, the pilgrimage you have been sent upon. Many will be here. Many who you will like to speak to, I think. And I was to assume you are to oversee our pilgrimage? 
Ah, I am the one who is here. I am the one who is welcome. And who uh, do we have the honor of speaking to? I am Mistress Enya. My mom used to really like Enya, so that's cool. She just sort of turns to you and blinks. And she blinks one set of eyelids and then another set of eyelids. Those, those are called nictating membranes. I learned about those in high school. I'm real weirded out. I'm sorry. I get chatty when I'm freaked out. It's all right. You are young, yes? Mm-hmm. You'll see much and many things. So, so, okay. That's I'm neat. Mistress Inya, again, thank you for welcoming us into the this abode. You said Espot, and there will be many here. Any words of warning or caution that you would have for us in my pack? <laughs> yes, all of the warnings. You are going to be amongst the sharks, no? And they will be eager to sniff out new blood, yes? As long as they don't bite too hard, I don't think we'll have too much of a problem. He says, we are also about here. Although there are many hours left in the night. I would like to show you to where we have made accommodations for you here in the communal haven. We would be honored. Please, follow me. Lead the way. And she begins to sort of plod her way through this large open space. Eventually she gets to a pretty large doorway, but you're not exactly sure how she's going to fit through it. She just sort of manipulates one of her legs so that it just sort of snakes in and then the second one and then she starts to pull herself through the door as like apparently there's not a lot of bones in that central mass so she just sort of squeezes herself through the door Layla's mouth has like kind of just been like a jar a little bit ever since she crawled down like the world's grossest spider and like when she does that Layla's eyebrows just go up like oh god no that is Reggie's face is pretty set I mean he's not he's definitely not used to this yet like nothing this this is the weirdest thing Um, this is still a lot Leon is like in his head is just like god damn it's me see fucking just Reggie is that what you're gonna turn into man not if I can help. Is it like puberty? I think it's more of a she, I think Mistress Enya desired to be that form, so she was that form. Hey, you know what? Right on. That does not freak me out less, but okay. They many like to experiment with what they look like in the most extreme variety. I've met a few it's not polite to talk about our hostess right behind her. That's Yeah, she probably has a lot of ears. So you follow her, and it's less like following someone walking down a hallway than just like following a mass that seems to propel itself through these corridors in some way that you're not entirely certain because you can't actually see past the mass. Right, we're just letting the, the hallway expand before us. Until eventually the mass passes by a door and then one of the legs sort of retracts a bit, and then it pushes open the door. Thank you. He'll go in. The room is about 15 foot by 15 foot. It's not huge. There are sort of military-style cots that have been laid out, about a dozen of them. There's some foot lockers, some dressers. Good thing I brought my sheets. It seems very much like... A place where out-of-towners, you know, not this isn't anyone's permanent home. And there is a small, fairly unadorned-looking altar in the back of the room. There's sort of a shuffling sound, sort of a squelching. You think you might hear a couple of bones break. And eventually her torso just sort of appears sideways in the door. And she says, this is where you will be staying while you are with us. Of course, you are free to find haven in the city, if you so desire. But there is territory to be concerned with. Here you are accorded the pace. Well, thank you very much. Merci. When we deeply appreciate it, I will speak to others tomorrow evening about... Yes, many will be coming. Many will come. Territory is important, 
especially if we do not know how long we will be in Montreal. Yes, yes. Do you need anything? Anything I can provide? He looks to everyone else, like, just to look to see if you have anything. Uh, no. I think I'll be all right. Uh, nothing. No, thank you, but I look forward to tomorrow night. Yeah, I think uh, uh, everything's everything's great, and we really appreciate everything. That we're we're good. Thank you. I do so like a polite young man. Yes, ma'am. And she cracks a smile, by which I mean the skin at her edges of her mouth cracks open and extends in a smile that goes from ear to ear. I pull his shirt a little, like, "Ooh, she likes you." Mm. Oh. Okay. And then her torso just sort of wrenches itself out of the doorway. And then you just hear the, the moving away sounds of terrible locomotion. There's a door, right? There's a door, yeah. I shut the door. He goes over and picks a cot and sits down on it. It bends slightly. Buck, it seems you're attractive to even spiders. Does that make you feel good? It does. It does not. Uh... Oh. <laughs> I'm sure she's not like the Black Widow. She won't eat you afterwards. What do you mean after? After what? Oh, you know. No. I've met a fair number of my my clan. Not all of them do that, but some of them really do that. She 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 has really done that. And I just don't I don't understand the motivation to make life more difficult for yourself. Just getting places? I don't I don't understand that instinct. Look. Maybe she could climb better. It's not about making it more efficient or easier. It's about aesthetics. Knowing different. At least that's how it's been explained to me by a few Zamisi. I'm sure she can slide herself right out of that thing whenever she wants to and just get a pair of rail regular legs. She just doesn't feel like it, I guess. To be fair, I can't do the things she can physically do nor would I want to, but I have, if I had that power, I would be tempted to, maybe. Really? I haven't really had much time to really think about. I don't think I'd choose a spider. He stands back up and he kind of walks over to you and you, there's that there's that distinct physical difference between you and him. And he's like, sometimes I wonder what it's like to be short. I've never been short. I don't think I'd like it, but... If I had the power to be short for a period of time... Would you like me to make you short? No. This dude is over here like, if I had the power to be short, I'd be short. And I'm thinking, yeah, but if you had the power to be a spider, you'd do that? Not necessarily. What I'm saying is there is correlation. I don't see it, boss. I see it. It makes sense. I think that's why we're here. It's just what she wants to do, and if she finds it lovely and if she enjoys what she looks like then more power to her i honestly if i had that power though i'd go more for a butterfly i do now that i've said it i don't want to think about what that would have to look like i mean i i don't do you want a proboscis like that seems like a very that's how you get a proboscis right there that you like i mean yeah i guess having an unfurling mouth straw would be very useful if you you know did just we're out on the go, but... I mean, for a grab-and-go juice box, I, I think that might be nice, but I was more thinking about the wings, because then I wouldn't have to go in a plane anywhere. You would never have to worry about a Capri Sun again. Just get right in there. Jesus. Good God, I love this. Um, I probably picked up a map of Montreal as we exited the terminal, and it's probably one of those big ones where it looks like a little pamphlet but then it unfolds until it's like a blanket <laughs> yeah like a big tourist map yeah yeah I'm gonna start opening mine of that cause I'm like where the fuck are we <laughs> do you see spider cave on there somewhere um let me see no because it's mostly in French oh wait I mean I've been, I've been here before and I've researched the language a little bit here I can show you where we are I, I mean, I can I can read French. It's fine. How do you say spider cave in French? Grotte d'Aranje. 
I'm assuming all of you want better accommodations outside of our host's abode. You know, this is fine. And, of course, the the clan has an amazing uh, propensity for hospitality. So we'll be well, well taken care of while we're under this roof. So we don't... I mean, it may not be the most... I am at a loss for words. I am still thinking about that butterfly. It's okay, Paisley. Center yourself. Looking at the map, you are definitely in downtown. Like, you find that station, that subway station. You're sort of in the heart of downtown. There's a lot of shopping areas, a lot of churches. There's no, like, correspondence to any sort of mortal building where you are. You're obviously under the ground, but there's, looking at the map, you actually specifically realize there's absolutely nothing to indicate that that this place is here. There's no mortal correspondence to where you are, but you have a general idea of where you are in the city. We can go shopping. We can go, like, see the town. We have time. Well, something I want to make clear to all of you is when we talk to Espot, again, we don't know how long we're going to be here. So we need to be cordial, but we also need to be strong. I don't want them thinking we are weak on both a mental, physical, or spiritual level. Okay. What's your plan? Oh, I won't know until I see who I'm up against. We are up against. Because I bet, if Reggie is correct, that they have taken some of ours and brought them here for their machinations, that some of the packs are going to be in on poking at us, prodding us, pulling us apart, seeing what happens. And again, if anybody needs some time to decompress and to reflect before anything major happens if you need time to distress you are of course welcome to come to me and um we'll just crack open all of the good book and we'll we'll soothe ourselves well thank you oh my love uh maybe not right now maybe that's like a before day rest sort of thing yeah that's what i meant that 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 puts me at she pauses and then like squints that puts me at ease right before bed but it's not that time no it's not that time we can uh we can definitely go out if you would like to we no no we'll, we'll slot it in for later my love my darling we need to find a hunting ground oh dang we should have asked Anya. that's why we need to understand who we're dealing with because if their territory is very important they, we are going to have to figure out where we can and cannot feed. Which one of us is going to draw straws to ask Enya? Ductus. Always Ductus. Always Ductus. I feel like that's good. I don't mind. I'm going to be probably glad handing a lot of individuals tomorrow. And I bet some of, and some of the packs are going to want to talk to all of you. You, after all, have been, we've been sitting here by Prisky Vajkos. So, bit of an issue. Uh, my, I guess you would call it, big air quotes here, hunting style, doesn't really involve the forceful taking of blood from some fucker in an alleyway. Um, it's usually the I sneak around and, you know, loot them up real good and then just take what I need and then go. I don't really have... Me and you can go do something together. I'll show you how I do it. It's very easy. Me, you... It'll be great. Okay. I mean, yeah. I just... I need. I might need a partner, because I can't overpower anybody. Ever. That seems terribly involved. Yeah, that's really involved. I mean, I usually just go for the sleeping... Sleeping? Easy. Quaaludes. I do, I do, too. But I need them to be not waking up during... Because that would be very messy and loud. And uncomfortable and awkward... I mean, yes, I could, like, make their mouth go away, but that would be very, that would be a bit invasive and take more time. I mean, it, whatever works. It is about 2 a.m., 2.30 a.m. You guys maybe have about three or so hours before dawn. So what do you guys want to do tonight? I would uh, leave the room and walk around. He wants to see the layout of this place, get to understand sort of the ins and outs. He doesn't want to be beholden to someone else guiding him all the time. This place is labyrinthine. 
There are many tunnels, there are many passageways, there are many little rooms here and there. There's this big central kind of cathedral space that is very much laid out like a Catholic church. Is anyone else going with him, or is it just... Yeah, I was going to go walk around with him because I didn't want to... I mean, I'm, you know, paranoid as all get out, so of course I'd want to, by my own conviction, always have an exit strategy. I want to know how to get out of here. I think Buck is probably going to sort of seclude himself, sequester himself off from everybody and sort of put his baseball cap down, down over his face as if he is sleeping, but he is continuing to fume. But, but before he, I do leave the room, I do put that novel right next to you. I don't say anything and I just walk away. So Paisley and Layla, what are you guys doing? I am making my bed. I am getting out my sheets from my luggage and getting out my comforter. And I have a little string of fairy lights and a, like my little name and craft foam and I'm tagging that up against my little bunk. So Paisley is setting up her space. What about Layla? What's Layla up to? Layla wants to go hunting with Reggie because he expressed, I guess, discomfort with hunting in an unfamiliar place like that if he can't overpower people. So I want to go hunting with Reg. At the moment, so the three of you are exploring this underground area then. Yeah. So I'm going to go with them. Leon, you recognize enough of the bona fides? You think this place at one point was either a church or some sort of church property because there seems to be like, you're pretty sure that's a baptismal font. Like you see sort of like proper Catholic, like the, if it's anything, you think it's a mausoleum of some sort. Yeah. So it's actually was buried into the ground or near the ground at some point. Apparently the Sabbat had at one point or still has their fingers in the city deep enough to just basically create and then bury this place. The city literally swallowed this place up. Mm -hmm. But beyond the central church area, it is a labyrinth. There are passageways that go every which way. There are a bunch of dead ends. There's like, you, you come upon this one fairly large sort of arching pathway that is just completely bricked up and like concrete poured over the, the front of it. Hmm, interesting. And uh, every so often, you come upon a doorway that leads to a set of staircases, and it seems like there are actually dozens of exits that lead out into Montreal at various places. There's actually a sort of, it's called the underground. It is miles upon miles of tunnels and underground shopping spaces and maintenance tunnels and just places where you are more than certain the Sabbat fucking rule these underground areas. Like, this is the playground where the Sabbat can let its freak flag fry once once it gets late enough. But yeah, so you find dozens of exits, dozens of little rooms. Occasionally, you pass another canite, unless you want to strike up any conversation with anybody. Everyone seems to be going on their business. Mm. He's not going to interfere with anyone just yet. But yeah, you guys, uh, you have Layla's you have Layla's map, which you can start to correspond to like, oh, well, here's the shopping center. If we go up here one, then there's like a bunch of nightclubs on the street. We've got a Sharpie just marking the tunnels. He actually looks at you and goes, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. Let's do a couple different ones. And I mark other places as well. Just random places like, mm, you should never do that. Okay. Just memorize it with your big boy brain. It seems like from this place, you can get damn near anywhere in sort of the heart of Montreal. Like, there's places in the outskirts that the underground isn't connected to, and the haven is only so big, but you can get to places where you can get to places fairly easily from this place. That probably takes them, like, two hours or something like that. Yeah, you, I mean, it takes you a good while to explore. At one point, you come upon a room that has maybe 30 above ground stone caskets. They're built into the floor, uh, the heavy stone lids. I'll actually go into that room and as long as no one's there or it doesn't seem to be absolutely the property of someone else, he's going to noodle around. Leon, that looks like a bedroom. The, this place used to be an actual uh, mausoleum. This is probably strictly for the dead. Do you think? 
Layla has a pretty deep appreciation for this sort of thing because the com the compound that she grew up on has had a lot of like underground spaces and so she's just like very impressed with this like this is nice it's a lot more elaborate than what she was used to like the temple space in her compound was beautiful like this but the rest of it was a little plain but this is all beautiful and so she's just like, oh, maybe it's a Catholic thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very Catholic. So Paisley, once Paisley gets her space all set up, which takes a little bit, but what, what would she be doing after that? Hey, Buck, do you smoke? I used to, back when my lungs worked. Why? Or do you have a pack on you? I don't. Is there something specific else I can help you with? Do you, or do you smoke, Paisley? No, I was actually wanting to do a craft project, but it's okay. Well, I might have something else. What kind of craft project are you trying to do? Oh, I was wanting to do like the, one of those things where you take a cigarette box and people who like to smoke will, you know, you take out a cigarette. Well, what I wanted to do is I wanted to take my favorite Bible passages and I wanted to write them down on kind of like cigarette sized pieces of paper, roll them up and put them in there. And that way you can give it to somebody who smokes and instead of pulling out a cigarette, they'll pull out something, you know, inspirational instead. And maybe that will, you know, have them stop. But I realize that that's kind of a weird idea since none of us breathe. You know, Sister Paisley, you are a goddamn marshmallow and I adore you. Thank you. That said, that's just about one of the most evil things I've ever heard anybody say they were going to do. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's chapter of Blood Covenant, a V5 Sabbat story, presented by Simulacra Studios. Simulacra Studios is an entirely listener-supported podcast. If you'd like to support the show, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash Studios. Patrons can listen to the entirety of Season 1 right now. In addition to gaining access to our private Discord server, where you can chat with the cast and crew of all Simulacra Studios productions. Again, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week.